Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tallington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan. He's a corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And how can we not talk about the cold? It is unbelievable all across the West and the Northwest and central part of the country. It is just really, really cold, indescribably cold, really. And he here it's still negative six right now and it was like negative seven yesterday morning they're saying today the high is going to be 20 and yesterday it was about eight um so tristan's wearing his new winter blanket from snug pups they thank god we're at the last expo so we got this cute little blanket with foxes it's a size 14 inches which just fits a small corgi perfectly and even though it doesn't come quite under his armpits the way i wish it would um, to protect him from some of the stuff in the road. Um, it, it's got a generous amount of material that does come pretty close there. And then the Velcro, which is pretty easy to rinse off in the sink, actually comes pretty close behind his front end. So uh, we wore this yesterday. I can feel him heating up wearing it right now. So let's talk about some things you need to be concerned about, especially you, Danny, up there in the tundra, um, about your dog in cold weather. Frostbite is a problem for your dog as much as it is a problem for you. And if your dog is one of those breeds with hair, not fur, Bichons, Poodles, you know, some of the Terriers, um, you got to be especially careful because they don't stay that warm. And your dog's pads and ears and nose particularly can get frostbite. And some of the signs may be that the skin there turns pale or, uh, or gray, and it can also get hard and cold. And it can be very painful to warm frostbite. I've had it on my hands quite a bit when the days when I was insane enough to be a skier. <laughs> and so you have to warm it very slowly. Um, severe frostbite skin is black and actually gets necrotic and falls off. So um, pray to God you don't find an animal in that situation. Um, but be aware of your own dog's pads, ears, and nose. And yesterday I took Tristan just for a walk the length of my yard, which isn't, I have eight acres, but it's not like very far. And within a short way, he was limping on one of his front paws because it was so cold and he has his fur trimmed out between his pads. So there's no snowballs building up in there, but just the cold and the salt on the road is really bad for your dog's pads. A second thing to be worried about with your dog in the winter is hypothermia. Um, <clears throat> And that's when there is, um, the dog has too much time in the cold. And this can happen because people put their dogs out with their children and they're playing in the snow and the kids are running around, but the kids have tons of winter wear on and the dog does not. Um, or if your dog falls in a, a, a pond or a stream in the winter, they can get hypothermia because the temperature is so cold that the circulation in your dog is not good. Um, the dog will shiver and her ears and feet will become cold and ultimately the dog will get weak and show um, lethargy, weakness, you know, and the muscles will um, start to stiffen and severe hypothermia is life-threatening. And this is what can happen if your dog falls in a pond. Again, you need to keep your dog out of water in the winter. Um, and that's not always easy to do. If you live near the ocean where the water may be somewhat warm, uh, a dog may be tempted to jump in, but the dog can still get hypothermia, especially one like mine that has a pretty thick coat. Yeah, when it was minus 23, it felt like minus 44. Too cold to have a wet dog. So a dog like mine, which may seem fine with all his hair, that hair also holds that wet water against him and makes him cold. So you need to get your dog indoors uh, so that he does not get hypothermia. And, you know, if it's too cold for you to be outside without a coat, then it's probably too cold for your dog. So if you are having a hard time being outside, your dog probably is too. Look for signs of shivering and anxiousness and pacing or um, looking for a place to burrow, especially if you have snow. Snow's 32 degrees all the time. Often a very cold dog will try to burrow into the snow to stay warm. So um, that's another sign. Now, of course, Tristan, when I'm out shoveling and he goes out with me, sometimes he will stand by the door when he's ready to come in. And he really is only good for about five minutes. Unless I'm literally throwing a ball with him, he does not want to be out there. Even though he has a corgi and he's roasting in his blanket right now. 
Um, and think about your coat too. Look at his coat. It's not covering his ears and his nose. The area is prone to frostbite. It's not covering his tail, another area you need to be concerned about, especially with those types of dogs like chihuahuas and dachshunds that don't have a lot of hair on their tail. Um, go out when the sun is shining with your dog. That makes a bit of a difference because the sunshine does feel warm, especially at this time of year when it's starting to warm up and the sun is out longer. Um, and the sun gives your dog vitamin D, which is always a good thing. Um, and also be aware that running in the snow can injure your dog's pads and legs and that you need to literally warm up your muscles and ligaments before you start playing in the snow. So many people will put an active young boxer out in the yard with the kids for half an hour while they're sledding and running around. And if that dog doesn't warm up slowly and immediately starts running, it can really hurt some tendons and ligaments in the legs. So you've got to be super careful. Um, when it's this cold out, don't go outside for very long. Literally, Tristan can go out and do his business and come in, and that's when it's like nine degrees. And certainly where Danny is, where it's minus 44, <laughs> your dog has to go out and do his business and come back in. Um, when your dog is indoors, make sure you have cozy bedding for him i mean most houses are drafty somewhere and a fleece blanket for your dog in his bed of some kind can be helpful to keep him warm again especially if you've got some of these small hairless dogs a blanket indoors not one like this but maybe one of the light knit acrylic ones that you can get all over the place at christmas time something like that can help keep him warm um, and make sure his bed is thick enough for him because a lot of seniors and even an active young dog can have really stiff joints in the winter. So you want to make sure he's got a comfortable place to lay down to recover from being outside in this weather. Um, and there was a fire um, that I heard on the Weather Channel somewhere in the south where a person had put a, a space heater on their screen porch or something for their pets. It caught fire um, and the person was able to rescue the dog, I think. <clears throat> yeah, they were. But space heaters on the porch, you know, watch out for salt. We're getting to that. Space heaters on the porch. If your dog is going to be that cold, bring him inside. I mean, I've heard of people out where Danny is in South Dakota putting chickens in the basement to keep him warm. So no matter what kind of dog you have, you know, Malibu, bring him in in this weather. It is just way too cold for any living thing to be outside, um, especially your pets, cats, that includes. Um, dogs need moisture in the winter. This might be a good time to add some coconut oil to their meals just to keep um, things moving on the inside and keep the hair and the coat and the eyes and the nerves happy with um, lots of moisture. Um, you can put coconut oil on their pads if they get really dry. I know my friends with dachshunds uh, for a while up in New Hampshire, they had to walk where there was just tremendous ice and chemicals on the road and the dogs got really cracked nails and feet. Just putting coconut oil on their feet can be a good thing. And if they eat it, it's not going to hurt them. Um, now there's some controversy about feeding them. Some people say feed them more. So if I did have a Malamute or a Husky and I went snowshoeing with him, sure, he's going to need a little more food. Does this little Corgi who's out for two minutes and not taking his two mile walk every day and maybe playing squeakies in the living room for a few minutes. Does he need extra food? No. So determine what your dog's needs are and don't go nuts like doubling up his meal. Just make sure his meal is, you know, more full than skimpy, especially if you've got a Malamute or a Husky or some kind of winter breed, an Eskimo dog or something, a Samoyed, and you're taking them outside and really enjoying uh, time with them and doing what they love, St. Bernard's, St. Bernie's Mountain Dogs. Make sure your dog is drinking enough. That gets us back to what we were talking about before with um, adding a little bit of baby food to their water and making sort of a slurry to encourage them to drink or um, just putting pieces of chicken in water and stirring it around can encourage them to drink. My dogs always liked tuna juice, so a little bit of that in their water made them drink. But it's really important to make sure they're drinking enough. This is a huge problem with horses. Um, and certainly with big dogs as well, they, horses get colic because they don't drink enough and their gut gets dried out and they get a blockage. This is also part of what happens when a big dog gets a blockage as well and ends up with bloat. So make sure the dog is drinking and you can add water, no matter what you're feeding, add more water because that'll help keep things moving through the intestinal tract. Now let's talk about the paws. Um, keep the fur trimmed out between the middles of the pads so that your dog 
um, doesn't get snowballs in his feet because that can cause limping and that can lead to other imbalances in his whole musculoskeletal system. Uh, the snow melt stuff and the stuff they put in the road, it is not just table salt. There's all kinds of chemicals and things in there. And if your dog or your cat licks their feet after walking in that, it can be a bad thing. So uh, I like to use a moist, damp, warm towel to, and it's one of those special ones, <clears throat> um, to wipe his feet off after I've come inside. Or another option, if you're lucky enough to have some loose, wet, new snow, is just let them run around in the snow for a little bit before you bring them in to kind of clean their feet off. Um, that can help a lot. Some people like to literally have a bowl by the door like you would with the kid's swimming pool and rinse the dog's feet off depending on what breed you have. I saw a dog yesterday that was a Lhasa and was she, oh, she was a Maltese and her feet were just super furry. So a dog like that, once she goes outside, you're not going to be able to clean that with a towel. And even if they trim up her feet, she's just a hairy dog in that area. So in that case, having that little uh, bowl of water by the door or bucket or a lot of people like to use one of those flat dish rinsing things because the dog doesn't tip it over and that makes you happy. Um, dog booties can be a good thing. Make sure you find some that fit your dog. I've had so many dogs. I put the booties on, they go out and you know, in five minutes they've lost one, two, three, and four. And then of course around your own house, use um, some kind of dog safe, pet safe uh, de-icing. I use kosher salt. I don't have that much de-icing to do here where I live because it's just not that icy. So the kosher salt does a fine job and Tristan doesn't tend to lick his feet when he's got salt on them. And you know, really my steps right now are clear. So there's really nothing on them. But if you live in a place where it's really icy, um, get pet friendly de-icer. You can use cat litter, you can use sawdust. Um, certainly the guy that does my plowing occasionally, if I don't shovel my steps quickly enough, he puts this mix of dirt and salt and chemicals on the steps, tracks it in the house. That's not good either. So I try to stay on top of it with the kosher salt. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and snow can be fun for your dog. Make sure you do shovel a little path for him or just like where Danny is. It is so cold. Just having a six by six foot area. She has multiple dogs. Um, they'll know to pee there and they will run out and go to mark where the other three dogs have peed and then come back in. So that can be really helpful to shovel a little space for your dog. I know after I've shoveled my back deck, the front steps, the back steps, the other back steps, the last thing I want to be doing is shoveling around, you know, a six foot space for the dog. But it is really important. He's a small dog. He really can't walk in this deep snow. Um, thank God the tree guys who were finished up their work yesterday, they have mashed down the snow to a pulp all over most of my backyard and the meadow next to my house. So that's great because Tristan can get out there and walk around a little bit where the snow is mashed down. So that's a good thing. So either pack your snow down or remove it entirely so that your dog has a cl close uh, to the grass place to walk. Um, make sure if your dog is outside on these cold days that you're like, especially when it's nine degrees, 10, 15, I think pretty much up to 22. I know from riding horses that their lungs can freeze breathing such cold air. Even if you have an active two year old boxer puppy, not great times to go out in the yard and throw snowballs with the dog. Uh, not even a great time to go out and build a snowman with the kids when it's this cold because the snow is not good at packing in this weather. So just be aware that a big exercise at this time when it's so cold out is a bad idea. Yeah, this person never walks where there's salt um, and they made a path and that's better. Yeah, see where I am, thanks to the tree guys, they've kind of mashed a whole strip down here along the road by my house. So I can just walk from here to the end of my lawn area and back. Well, that's really a, a field. Um, and Tristan doesn't have to be on the road at all. So that is ideal. And a lot of people I know will drive to a place um, where the snow has been cleared from sidewalks for people. And there's, you know, often all kinds of chemicals on anything that's a sidewalk. But around here, there are plenty of places to go to where your dog can just be loose and walk in the woods. Now, it is way too cold to do that in this weather, um, but that's another way to avoid uh, stuff getting on their feet from the road. And certainly the place where we work as an educator, because I work with a lot of seniors, boy, do they dump every kind of chemical you can think of and salt with chunks this big 
all over the sidewalk so that they can cover their butt in case somebody falls. And um, yeah, it takes longer to get the jacket than boots on when they are out there. So uh, when I go to work, I have a real problem because I can't be washing his feet with a wet towel and stuff. So luckily right by the door, um, there is some fresh, lightly fluffed snow. So I have him take a little trot around there and hopefully that will clean his feet off enough because he does like to lick his feet at work, don't you? <laughs> and then <clears throat> take special care for seniors. Um, in this weather, it can really impact them. Their joints can be stiff. Um, you know, they can take a couple of slip slides, get fallen through the snow crust and have a very hard time getting back inside. So don't leave your dog outside alone and keep a special eye on seniors. And remember, seniors and dogs can be eight and up depending on your breed. So uh, Tristan's nine. I don't really consider him a senior because all my corgis have been 16. But still, um, you know, he's not four anymore and he could get an injury out there and I would have to go rescue him. So make sure you're watching your dog or you're out with your dog. And again, don't leave your dog in the car. Even if the motor's running, your dog does not need to go to the grocery store right now. He does not need to go to Petco with you. Um, it is not a good idea to have your dog in a cold car or to leave the car running with your dog in it. And lots of people can tell you stories about why that's a bad idea. So keep these things in mind. As you can tell, I'm getting sicker and sicker from this whatever I have from the Pet Expo. Um, anytime you're in a place with thousands of people, you're exposed to a lot of germs. Right, Tristan? He said, I'm okay. So don't forget, Snug Pups has these great coats. They have a heavy version too. This one's only the medium winter version that can keep your little dogs warm. The, this, this is the sort of medium size. They come in a couple sizes bigger. And we were looking at some of the preppy models. They had some with argyle, some with blue plaid. But we had a unanimous vote from Judy and Hugh and mom that we like the foxes because the corgi's a fox right <laughs> so he's got the foxes <laughs> and they have a bit of a retro vibe with the aqua and the kind of peach foxes <laughs> and tristan really needs it right now so i'm glad i got it all right everybody stay warm and keep your pets and you safe in this weather and we will be back uh tomorrow i think if i'm not too sick <laughs> all right bye-bye everybody have a warm day